guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Man, have I got a classic today. We're gonna do Black Sabbath Into the Void. So this one, you just cannot believe this was written in 1971. I mean, it's just crazy that they were doing this type of stuff back then. Um, uh, so this is on the Masters of Reality album, Master of Reality album, and uh, from 1971, and it's it's in dro not drop to it's in C sharp standard tuning. What is that? That is every string on the guitar tuned down a minor third. So that means this low E string goes down to a C sharp, and then the A string goes down to an F sharp. And then the D string goes down to a B. And then the G string goes down to an E. The B string down to a G sharp. And then the high E string down to a C sharp. So this is called C sharp standard tuning since the configuration of the tuning stays the same as standard tuning. It's just every string is brought down uh, three half steps. Um, unlike what you'd call a drop C sharp, where you just kind of tune the whole guitar down a half step and then just drop the low string down another whole step. But how uh, Tony Iommi's playing it, he's got this every string tuned down. Now, before I jump into the track, please check out my Guitar Academy. Uh, if you guys like what I do here on YouTube and you want to support it and get something more out of it, check out my guitar courses. They're all in my Guitar Academy. You're going to see a link to it in the description below. There's even a coupon code there called Blues Rock Bootcamp. It's a new live blues rock course that I got going live um, this weekend. And I'm also going to be teaching those course live every week for about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, for eight straight weeks. Um, so what are you seeing in this video now? You can join us and ask me questions while I'm teaching the course. That's why I'm starting to do them live. Or if you're seeing this way down the road, you can still watch the course because all of them will be archived and I'll probably have live courses um, then as well. So, But if you want to use this 30% off at annual subscription, use that Blues Rock Boot Camp that I have going on. You'll see the coupon code in the description below. All right, I'll see you there. So let's jump into the track. So uh, I am tuned down, as I said, C-sharp standard tuning. And we have this main riff. You kind of start with a slide. And then... So that starts with the low, I'm, now by the way, I'm gonna call this like the low E string. And then the A string and the D string, even though we know they're tuned down. Well, I, we don't need to compute all that crap in our heads. We'll just call, we'll describe it like it's in standard tuning, but put your guitar in this tuning and it'll match up. So, low E string, then open, then three, zero, three. And then you're gonna, on the A string, yeah, open, one, two, so it is. Then come over here to the D string, second fret. Let's play this. All right, then back to the A string, second fret. Then go to the, back to the D string, first fret. Then back to that second fret on the A. Then the open D. And then kind of end this part of the rhythm with the first fret there on the A string vibrato so we have this all right so now kind of the second half of the riff is this so so after you're doing that vibrato there at the first fret on the a string what you're gonna do is hit the open a's real quick Hammer on the first fret and pull back off to the open. So kind of a little, quick little grace note. And then down to the third fret there on the low E string. So we have this, that kind of played three times. So. so after you've done that three times, you go back up to that open A string, let that ring, and then. So let that open A ring a little bit, and then it's gonna climb up the string again. One, two, on the A. 
up to that second fret on the D again. And then you're gonna end the whole thing pulling off one to zero on the A string over to three on the low E. So all together, real slow. repeat. All right, now at about the 39 second mark, we have this. So you can start with the low E open, and then you're gonna come up here and play this E power chord. I'm just gonna call it an E power chord, but we know it's a C sharp. But, but what he's doing here, he's adding the fifth and the bass to it as well. So as, if it wasn't tuned low enough already, he's playing uh, the regular E power chord, which is the seventh fret on the A and the ninth on the D, but he's also adding the fifth in the bass. Which, so you, basically that means you're gonna add the seventh fret on the low E as well. So you're gonna bar the seventh fret, across, seventh fret across the A and the E, and then hold that nine on top on the D string. So you hit that four times. And then move it back two frets to a D power chord. So then you hit it three times there. And then you're going to just hit the, the note on the low E string there at the fifth fret by itself, and then, and then seven, six, five on the A string with some, you know, heavy vibrato when you get to that fifth fret, so this. And then back to the open E again, you kind of start the, that riff over again. Except here, when you get to the second time through and you get to that uh, D power chord, it jumps down and grabs that third fret on there on the low E, kind of hold out some barbado. And then kind of a variation on that main riff. What's so you, you, you have that and just climb up zero, one, two on the A to two on the D, and then the open E. So all together, we have this. So then you get back to that E, that open E kind of starts to riff over again. So that was just like the first time through, right? Which we did that seven, six, five on the A string. But here, instead of repeating the riff again, it just goes to this little ending. So that's just hitting this, uh, we'll call it a C power chord. Is that the third fret on the A string? So third fret on the A, fifth on the D there. You hit that five times. Then move up two frets to the D power chord. And then down to the second fret. Hold that. Just hit those last two ones. So one, two, three, four, five, one, one. And then back to the main rhythm. Then we get to the verse riffs. Now the verse riffs, there's, I call it a verse riff, so it seems like the same riff, but it's actually, when, he, when Ozzy starts singing over it, they change how he plays it. Uh, Tony play, slightly changes how he plays that riff. So you basically have the time when there's the instrumental version of it and then the vocal version of it. So it looks like this. <laughs>
So I don't know if you can pick that up, what I'm doing there. Uh, we basically, first, the instrumental version of it, you're gonna hit the low E string, uh, and then you're gonna be playing um, a hammer from five to seven on the A. So you hit the low E with it, and it's first at the five, you're gonna hammer onto that seventh on the A. So you do that with the low E under it. And then you hit four hits on the low E. And then do that move again. <clears throat> so we basically have this hammer, then four hits on the low E, then did that again. And then we play the note by itself on the fifth fret on the A string with some vibrato. So that's the part right there that's different when Ozzy comes in with the vocals. So we have this. And then we, uh, the second half of the riff is this. So that's kind of the same riff starting, but on the second hammer-ons in the second half of the riff, you're just gonna hit the low E string twice. So we have this. And then you're gonna jump over to the fifth fret on the low E string, not the A kind of slightly bend it up and bring it back down. So the whole riff um, minus, a, you know, when there's no vocals going on, looks like this. Just repeat that a little bit. Now, when Ozzy's vocals come in, the change that happens is we, we start with this two hammer on still. With the, except now it's gonna be like the second half where he just, he does first four hits on the low E, and then after the next hammer on, it's just two. So. And then when he plays that note on the uh, the A string, the, the fifth fret, it's a quick half step bend release. So it's the vibrato. And then the second half of the riff is the same as the previous riff when there was no vocals. So we have this. So that that's the vocal version. So that's the little uh, as when Ozzy's singing. All right. Now at the two minute and five second mark, we had this other riff. But I don't know. It's kind of like a transition riff. I don't know. Kind of quickly goes back to the verse, but it's just this. So it's basically just seven. Five on the A and the low E. And then back into that same verse. So it's basically just adding that little 7, 6, 5 riff across those two strings. And then back, the rest of it is just the same as the verse. And then we get back to the, the regular verse in the song. Um, and then we just basically, after the next verse, we just have a shorter version of that. It just kind of goes to an E power chord there. Um, so there's nothing really new. It's just... All right, then we get to what is actually the bridge. That's at the three minute and three second mark. So this um, bridge, has kind of that same riff in it at one point, but uh, let me kind of play through it for you real quick and then I'll show you how to play it.
so that is, uh, we're just gonna play zero. It's mostly on this, the low E string here. Zero, three. And then what happens here is he goes up to six, five. But before he gets to that six, a lot of times, not every time he plays it, but he's, when he's leaving that note, he kind of sounds the open E string just with a pull up. Say this. Or straight to it. So I just hear sometimes an E, open E in there between those two notes. And sometimes it's not there. So I think it's just when he's leaving the string, sometimes it just kind of creates that resonance on the low E. Um, but we got this zero, three, six, five, three, zero. And then you're gonna start over. So it basically makes you do two hits on the open E at the same, uh, back to back, the, the last note in the riff and the first note. A little quick little E in there. All right, so after you've done that riff 12 times, we go back to that previous riff we did earlier at the two minute and five second mark. Which is that seven, six, five on the A and the low E. Then. Then. You no, know, I just did the riff again one more time and then back into that riff. And then. It just takes us straight back to the same verse. Remember, there's an instrumental version of the verse and then uh, uh, a vocal version of it. And that's the same thing for when we come to it, this next section of the song. It's the same thing, um, same way of playing it. And then it goes back into that set. All right, so um, uh, from there, it just kind of, you know, just the same riffs goes back into the same verse again but then we get to this solo section so now instead of demonstrating his uh, Tony Allen was solo note for note this is obviously kind of like he's using the same kind of scale patterns that even he, it, when he plays live he he's kind of plays it relatively the same with the same scale patterns but not the exact same licks he kind of improvises with it a little bit live um, so what I'm going to do is kind of show you what scale patterns he's using mostly um, there's a little, there's some riffs in there too that will, in this whole solo section um, that I'll show you as well. Um, so I'm gonna play through it real quick to you, but keep a note, it's, it's more inspired by his solo. I'm kind of really just kind of show you how to do your own solo like him. Uh, I'm not trying to do the exact note for note which is on the album. Kind of now just kind of playing it like he does live. He just kind of messes around with it. But you will learn the exact scale patterns and shapes that he's doing this with. Um, so you'll be able to do it on your own. So it sounds something like this, though. So that was kind of going through the different sections, and when I got to the actual solo parts, they were a little bit improvised, kind of similar to what he's doing, but I'm not really trying to get it note for note. Uh, these types of solos are kind of weird to get note for note anyway, because they're just kind of 
obviously he's kind of playing off the cuff. Um, but I think it's actually better for your own knowledge of the guitar to really kind of just see what he's doing first. And you're gonna get a lot more out of it that way. Mm -hmm. So what is he doing? He's playing E minor pentatonic, but of course, because we're in this tuning, it's C sharp minor pentatonic, but um, it's visualized like E minor pentatonic. So just think about it that way. So you, he still uses these same exact patterns. He doesn't use the entire patterns. He uses basically half of a couple of patterns um, to create this. And then there's his actual riff and it's really cool. That riff, well, we'll learn that riff and then we'll learn that little breakdown section too. So, so at the beginning of the solo though, he's starting with this, uh, if, if you know your E minor pentatonic scales, he's using E minor pentatonic and he uses some E blues. Uh, minor blues as well. So we have first this form up here at the 12th fret. All right, most people um, that have been playing guitar longer than 35 minutes know this scale shape, right? I'll demonstrate it anyway. It's 15, 12 on the high E, and then on the B. And then 14, 12 on the G, D, and A. And then the low E string, 15, 12. Now, he doesn't really use the whole pattern, though, uh, at least in this solo. He kind of just hangs out on the, the, really, these, just the top four strings. And what he does is he adds the blues note to the lick. Now, I'll show you some actual closer things of what he's doing, doing in a second, but I just want to get the scale patterns down first. So, on this note, when he plays 14, 12 on the G, he's gonna add this note to the 15th fret, which is, makes it the blue scale. And then he'll make it all the way down to that E, but that's about it. All right, but um, a big portion of the solo is actually down here, and he uses little bits and pieces of this shape. Here, so we have this minor pentatonic shape. Now, I usually, I like to relate as much back visually to a major, a, a parent major key. For me, that simplifies the visualization process. If you've ever taken my, uh, any of my uh, improvisation courses in my academy, you know that I do this and it really simplifies the visualization process across the fingerboard. So for instance, if you're vi visualizing most of what you do, whether minor scales or modes, or, um, or major scales, but you're visualizing it as the parent major key, kind of really simplifies how the fretboard works. Um, even though you're still, I'm still an E minor pentatonic here, but I'm visualizing it as G major. So now, if I'm visualizing it as G major pentatonic, I have a scale shape down here. So he basically uses two notes, I mean, uh, two strings of this, of this form. So um, now this whole form though, it's five, seven on the E, A, and D. You can just use these two fingers. Um, and then four, seven on the G, five, eight on the B. So there's a little shift there. And then five, seven on the uh, high E string. So a lot of people, they're pentatonic play, bass players. They kind of hang. They kind of avoid those strings because of that little shift. And instead, they can get those notes instead of go like that. They can shift up and grab it in the next form up, and it's a lot more comfortable. They can just use their two fingers and, and not worry about it. So that's what uh, Tony Aum is doing as well. So we have five, seven on the A, five, seven on the D. And then what he does is he slides up into the next pentatonic shape, which is, you know, slide up to the ninth fret. Now this shape, if you're looking at it as a major shape, it's the shape built off the third note in the key. Or um, if you're a, a caged guy, um, you, you know it is formed G. So anyway, but the whole form, even though we're not gonna use the whole form, is 710 on the low E and the A. 
And then seven, nine on the D and the G. And then eight, 10 on the B and seven, 10 on the high E. But he really just uses the two strings in the middle. So we have these, these notes. And then the shape up, the same thing, but in the two middle strings. And he connects them with a the slide. So you slide up to that nine. And then he'll kind of slide back down to that seven, and then he's. So that's a really simple fingering. So. So he's doing some bends on this top note, and he'll do some bends on the seven and the five down here as well. So that's all he's doing in the, really the first half of the solo, is just messing around. So pretty simple stuff. Then he goes into that riff. Now that riff is just seven, six, five on the A, over to seven on the low E. And then we're gonna go back up. We're gonna go five, six, seven on the A, up to five on the D string, and then back to that seven on the A. So we have this. Whatever finger, I know I'm mixing up the fingerings, but you can do it like that if you want. All right, from there, they kind of break everything down real quick. That's just this big E power chord. So open E string, second fret on the A and the D, and then the fourth fret on the G, really. And then you can just have the open high E and B if you want. So we have really the four bottom strings are the important ones. And then what we're gonna do is slide into the fifth fret on the low E string and slowly bend it up and then back to that same chord. Do the same process again, except we're going to slide into the 8th fret. And then back down to the E power chord. Then up to the 10th fret. Back to the chord. And then up to the 12th. So slide into 5, 8, 10, 12. kind of pulling it downwards a little bit as I want to get that top, the top note. And then we kind of have the second half of the solo, and then in this half, he starts using the... And then back. that same riff. So I'm just kind of combining now that second solo I'm going up is. So it kind of starts, he does that blues lick, that really common blues lick that will bend to the 14th fret there on the G string. And then 12 on the B in the height. These will pull off 15 to 12 on the B. Over to 14 on the B, uh, G string, I'm sorry. And then back to the B string 12th fret and then hit the double stop, both the 12 and the G and the B. So it's kind of just, he does that like a... So like I said, I, want, I don't want to get note for note for this. He does some unison bends in there off the E. And he does some lines that incorporate that blues note. So just kind of think about that. So just kind of go back to this chord each time. And 
he kind of works his the fourth time through, he kind of grabs that knife right, he's back to where he was in the first hole. Then, then he kind of jumps back up to the 12 position. And then we're back into that same riff to end the song. All right, so it just really rocks. And like I said, it's, just, it's crazy that this stuff was created in 1971. I mean, we have riffs like that now, I know, but uh, it's probably because of them doing that stuff way, 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 way back then. I mean, nobody sounded like that. So very, very cool stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed going along with it um, with me. It was a lot of fun to kind of look into this uh, really just the beginnings of metal, and it's really, really cool. All right, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.